This is a video about repairing my HP 1741A Accel scope. I needed to use it for my solar project, but turning it on for the first time in over 20 years, I have nothing but a horizontal line on the scope, which meant I had to repair it myself if I wanted to use it. It was manufactured in 1977 and it's probably similar to the oscilloscope that Steve Jobs and Steve Orsenek used to build their first Apple computer since Steve Jobs had worked at Hewlett Packard earlier. I have looked at purchasing a new scope, but they look like toys compared to my old HP oscilloscope. Now, I'm at the point in my life where I no longer get any joy in repairing anything unless it's a necessity. Been there, done it so many times. But this is an exception since I wanted to use my old scope again. Luckily, I had the schematic buried in the manual with over 200 pages. Hopefully, I would not need another oscilloscope to repair my old oscilloscope. This is the uh, power supply board for the oscilloscope. It's located on the bottom of the scope so I had to turn the scope upside down in order to uh, get to it. Whenever you work on uh, any type of electronic equipment, the first thing you want to do is check the voltage source. Uh, there would be probably be several different voltages, DC voltages on the board. So you have to check each one of them. In this case, the negative 100 volts and the plus 45 volt source were off. So I decided to uh, pull the board to uh, investigate it further. This is the overall view of the bottom of the oscilloscope. And you can see I'm in the process of disconnecting the connectors to the power supply. Uh, on the back of it, you can see that it has uh, five transistors that's uh, connected to heat sinks, and uh, each one of those has to be disconnected also. This is the board uh, finally removed from the scope. It took me about 30 minutes to figure out how to get it out because there were so many connections on there. Um, also, you had a big long rod that goes to the on and off switch. But uh, now that I removed it, it only take me about five minutes to remove now. Once I had the board out, uh, the power supply out, um, I started uh, checking the components on there. And I found out that this dial here going to the 48 um, power supply was bad. It's a bridge dial, which means it has uh, four dials inside the encasement. Also, on a further investigation, I found out that one of the capacitors, 10 microfarad capacitor, was shorted. So that needed to be replaced also. The old capacitor, the one that was shorted in the scope, was 10 microfarad at 100 volts. I used the 10 microfarad at 450 volts to replace it. Now with capacitors, you have to have the correct capacitance when you replace it. But the voltage, as long as the voltage is equal to or greater than the, uh, the voltage of the old capacitor, you're good to go. In this case, um, what I had was an upright capacitor and I used that to replace the bad capacitor. After uh, installing the uh, power supply board back into the scope, um, I had the 48 volts now but uh, I was still having uh, problems with the negative 100 volts. So I started troubleshooting that and looking around and I went backwards 
from the uh, output of the negative 100 volts and checking the components, and it led to the British diode. Now, even though the British diode tested good uh, under load, it was getting very hot. So it had an, an internal uh, resistance inside of it that was um, dragging down the negative 100 volts. So that had to re be replaced too. Okay, we have uh, everything put back together and I have the uh, oscilloscope right side up again. The power supply that I was working on was it's underneath here. I haven't put the covers on yet. Uh, these are the components that were bad. It was a bridge diode here, bridge diode here, and this capacitor here. And I replaced this capacitor with one of these capacitors. This is 10 microfarad, but I wanted it to be ro more robust, so I put a, this here is 450 volts, and this here was 100 volts in, in there. So it doesn't matter about, it's just so that the voltage is higher than the original one. It'll work. Um, the critical thing is getting the, um, the microfarad correct, the, capaci the capacity of the capacitor, in other words, correct. So, come over here and switch it on. And we have this on channel A here and here. And now you can see the square wave on here. Um, and I can position it up and down like so. And if this is one volt coming in here, calibrated one volt, you can say from here to here is one volt. And from here to here is uh, half a volt. And uh, if we go to channel B over here, and we can position this up also, and from here to here is one volt, and over here is a half a volt. Um, now we can now uh, alternate between the two signals, and we can put them right, we can adjust it right on the top of each other where you kind of, it looks like there's, there's just one signal when there's actually two of them. And then you can, that's for comparison. Um, if you're working on electronic equipment and you want to compare the, the waveform that uh, the equipment is generating. Um, so I can separate them like, like that too. So you got both of these coming in over here. This, this over here is the focus. You can focus it back and forth to make it sharp. This is the intensity here. Um, this is the trigger where you want to trigger it so that it locks in correctly. Uh, and then you have um, this sweep right here where you can have more of the signal showing on the oscilloscope if you want. And you can also bring it out here so you can examine it more if you need to. So here we have one cycle here. <clears throat> so um, yeah, everything seems to be working correctly. Um, this oscilloscope is uh, 43 years old, and so, so I'll probably get a lot more use out of it. So I'm happy about that. Um, so hope you found this informative, and uh, I'll catch you next time. Bye.